But this webinar is part of a series of webinars. And over the next month or so, we'll be covering measurement and remeasurement, and we'll be looking at presentation at the same time. And then finally, we'll be looking at disclosure in relation to financial instruments. But here, we're looking at the first one, which is recognition. And whilst we're in the first webinar, we will talk about the accounting standards that govern financial instruments at the moment and how they're going to be changing in the future. So in the next 45 minutes or so, what we're going to be having a look at is the relevant standards for financial instruments, well, the relevant standards today, and the relevant standards from 2015 onwards. It is an odd time to be talking about financial instruments because there is a new standard that is undergoing a fairly difficult birth at the moment that is due to come in 2015. I'll give you a very, very brief overview of where that standard is going because there are some bits of it that are nearly finalised and there are some bits of the new standard which seem to be quite a long way away from being finalised. But we'll talk about that in just one second. We'll talk about classification of assets and liabilities. That's financial instruments as assets and liabilities. Uh, we'll talk about their recognition and their measurement methods as they're recognised and re-measurement, just to introduce that. And we're going to be looking at a number of examples. To try and make this a bit more real, we'll go through eight examples of how various financial instruments, including fairly routine things like investments in shares, through derivatives and then looking through at liabilities get accounted for. We'll talk a little bit about derivatives. I say a little bit, four of our eight examples are on derivatives, but we'll be fairly quick through those to make some points. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about hedging, but we're just going to touch upon that, partly because it's a very long, complex subject and partly because Actually, lots of entities don't end up using hedging. So I'll just briefly uh, introduce hedging in our session here today. So let's kick off. What are the standards that you need to look at? Well, you've got IAS 32 and IAS 39. 32 deals with financial instruments presentation. 39 deals with recognition and measurement. I have to say, to try and separate these standards isn't terribly useful. I mean, in some ways, it's a trifle odd that there are two standards. They rely upon each other enormously. It's virtually impossible to read IAS 39 on recognition and measurement in isolation because it cross-refers so much to IAS 32. IAS 32 probably stands on its own two feet a little bit better than IAS 39, but 32 deals far more with entities issuing financial instruments, particularly uh, entities issuing loan notes and certain sorts of shares. Lots of space in IS32 is dedicated to identifying whether something is equity shares or not. And finally, you've got IFRS 7, which deals with the disclosure elements uh, of financial instruments under IFRS. Now, things are moving, as I said right at the start. In a few years' time, things will look different. The main difference will be IFRS 9 on financial instruments will be fully in force. Now, there are bits of it that you can use now, but most people will be applying it for periods commencing 1st of January 2015. So IFRS 9 is the, the great new standard. Bits of IAS 32, 39 and IFRS 7 will survive, but it's hard to say at the moment exactly how all of this is going to look in a couple of years' time, because IFRS 9 is still being drafted as we speak. Let's talk a little bit about the development of IFRS 9. One thing we thought we'd got pretty much down was classification and measurement of financial instruments, assets and liabilities. Uh, in fact, they've gone back to tweet tweak a few bits on classification and measurement. An area that is proving very difficult at the moment is impairment. Of course, as when financial instruments get recognised, they are recognised at fair value. But as financial instruments are re-measured in future, there are lots of issues in terms of how do we account for their impairment? Is it at fair value? Should there be a different model? Well, we're expecting some sort of exposure on that very soon. 
And finally, hedge accounting. Well, whilst there's lots on hedge accounting that they haven't finalised in IFRS 9, uh, they are nearly there on general hedge accounting. 